Namaste. So I want to make a fitting ending or maybe a coda to the God GPT series. We've been using the concept of God GPT as a metaphor for the way that God actually works and how sadhana, especially bhakti sadhana, is a process of prompting the God GPT who responds not with words. Words are too small to contain the God GPT's answers. But he responds with states of being and consciousness. So what does that really mean? Well, let's take a look at our good old chart of the four levels of consciousness, four states of consciousness. And we'll see that in bhakti, devotion, bhakti yoga, means svapna consciousness, cultivating svapna, or dreams. Now, here's the place where we go off into our original views, and you won't find this in any scripture or no uh, popular teachers are going to teach this because it's too far out, it's too radical, but it's true. And if you look at your own experience, you can see that it's true. That's how I came up with this. What am I talking about? Well, that we are basically living in dreams. This is where we really live, in dreams. And, and rather than try to explain it uh, mechanically <laughs> or as a information theory or something like that, I want to give you a practical example. You know, some days you wake up in the morning and the sun is shining and the birds are chirping and, you know, maybe you're in love, you know, and you're just like cruising effortlessly through the day. Everything is beautiful. Everyone is happy, especially you. Now, compare that with one of those days where you wake up <laughs> and it's like, bah humbug, life is terrible. Uh, my significant other just dropped me like a bomb. <laughs> Or whatever, you know, I lost my job or I wrecked my car or all of the above. <laughs> you know, those kind of days look completely different from days when you're happy, isn't it? What's the difference? It's the same life, the same body, the same person, the same world. Everything's the same. The only difference is the way we think about it. Huh? And I know, I know, there's been a million books like Think and Grow Rich and all these nonsense things. The Secret, you know, which is basically a wish upon a star. <laughs> but there's a grain of truth in that. And that's why those books are popular, because everyone can recognize from their own experience that the way we think about our experience actually changes it. It actually makes things look and feel radically different. For example, if we practice positive thinking and we always try to stay with the positive view, the positive spin on any situation, even though we may be creating simply a dream it makes us happy, doesn't it? When that girlfriend or boyfriend that you have a crush on seems to reciprocate, doesn't that make you happy? But you don't know, you know, a smile is just a smile. <laughs> a kiss is just a kiss. <laughs> so you can't really know what's inside the other person, but you can dream about it. You can think about it. And maybe this is the evolutionary innovation that makes humans 
basically fundamentally different from animals. Because animals dream. You watch a dog or cat sleeping and their limbs are moving. Huh? Maybe they even make sounds. But when they wake up, the dream is completely gone. And it doesn't affect them in their present time life in waking consciousness, Jagrat consciousness. But human beings are different. Human beings can overlay. Adhyaya is a Sanskrit word, means to make an overlay, a projection, or a superimposition of thoughts on reality. Or, put it another way, Svapna consciousness overlaid on Jagrat. So, in Jagrat consciousness, we see a world which is full of objects, and it's very mysterious because the objects in front block out the objects behind. We can't see everything. Uh, we don't really know what's out there. <laughs> and we're always being surprised by the way these objects interact, isn't it? We think we understand life. We think we understand reality. And then something comes along that completely blindsides us and like surprises the heck out of us, often in a not-so-nice way. So this is everyone's experience in the material world. How is this so? Because we think our dreams, our thoughts, are reality. We're confusing. In other words, we're inter polating or superimposing our dreams on waking consciousness, svapna on jagrat. And then we're surprised when jagrat doesn't follow our dreams. <laughs> or maybe we're disappointed or maybe we're crushed. You know, it depends on how much emphasis or how much effort or how confused we are about these dreams and their relationship to waking consciousness. So with our four states of consciousness, we can clearly see that Jagrat, or the consciousness of through the senses of the world and all these different objects in it, is clearly superseded by Swapna, especially when we're asleep. When we're asleep, Jagrat disappears completely. The whole world, the senses, the body, everything is gone. The only thing left is the mind. And something similar happens at death. At death, the gross body becomes inoperative. It fails. It breaks down. It gets old and wears out. It stops functioning. So does that change us, who we are, what we are? No, no, because there are five sheaths, five bodies. The Ananda Maya Kosha is consciousness. The Vijnana Maya Kosha is will, intention. And the Mano Maya Kosha is mind, memory, language, and all that. The Prana Maya Kosha is life energy including functions like procreation and so on. And finally, the Anamaya Kosha is the gross body. So when the Anamaya Kosha fails, which it inevitably will, it drops off, and what is left is the four subtle bodies. The energy body, mind body, intelligence body, and consciousness. So these then transmigrate to a new body if we stay in the material world or if we transcend the material world, the world of duality, these four become our body, who we are, our energy, our mind, our intelligence, and our consciousness. So... 
what is left when the gross body is finished is exactly the same as what is left when the gross body goes to sleep. In other words, dreams. Dreams and consciousness. Dreams and awareness. We're aware of our dreams, and the world of dreams is significantly different from the world of awakening. We went over that back in Mandukya Upanishad series. So, knowledge of consciousness leads inevitably to the conclusion that at the time of death, just like at the time of going to sleep, we are left with nothing but our dreams. But what are our dreams? The problem is we take in so many dreams or so many thoughts from external sources, parents, family, school, work, the media, the internet, and so on. But are these really good for us? And usually the answer is no. The reason is because those dreams give us an identity, a sense of who we are that is irrevocably welded to duality, jagra, the multiplicity of objects in the so-called real world, but it's not really real because it disappears every night. How could something so temporary be real? You know, most people consider that dreams are not as real as Jagrat, waking consciousness. Because they say, well, it's just temporary. You dream, and then you wake up, and you forget all about it, and it doesn't have any real impact. But wait a minute. Let's take another look at that. If the material body, the gross body, is temporary, has a beginning and an end, and it ends at death, but it also ends when we go to sleep. So actually, the material world, the world of duality, Jagrat, the world of many objects, is just as unreal, just as temporary as our dreams. And as we brought up right in the beginning here, your dreams, your thoughts, color, your experience, to the extent that the same exact thing can be a completely different experience depending on your state of consciousness, on your state of mind. That means we should fill our minds with positive thoughts. We should fill our mind with beautiful thoughts. And what is more beautiful, what is more positive than thoughts of God? So that's how come all the great scriptures recommend that we constantly meditate on God, on God's form, qualities, name, activities, abode, associates, and so on. This is bhakti. And even though it's just a thought, huh? thoughts have an impact. They affect our quality of life in a very tangible way. So many therapists, if you go to a therapist and you say, well, I'm suffering from depression or something like that, they will advise you, well, just stop the negative thoughts. Cut out the negative thoughts, replace them with positive thoughts. You know, simple, right? As ye think, so ye shall become. I don't know who said that. I said it. <laughs> because that's my experience. As you fill your mind with thoughts of a particular quality, those thoughts color your experience, and the more you dwell on them, the more they create your experience, especially in dreams and at the time of leaving the body, at the time of death. Well, this is the secret of God, GPT. Aum Tat Sat, Aum Shakti Aum, Aum Namah Shivaya.